very good morning i think uh, i had i was always on the other side i never like uh, spoke to like uh, professors like professors were on the like on the uh, dais and we were always down this first time for me that i'm giving a a presentation to a professor around here so i'm a bit nervous but uh, i hope you you will help me out uh okay how many of you know back off i think few of you okay uh back off is a, a german based company uh, uh pioneer in pc based uh, control just close yeah uh okay we started in 1980 uh okay not we miss i was not there uh, mr hans backoff the owner of the company uh, and uh, it has grown now to like a like 34 years now with uh, almost 2500 employees uh with lot of technological innovations so when people come to back off uh, uh, stall or uh, back off uh, presentations so they always find like something innovative and uh, that is the drive behind back off and uh, okay i joined back off uh, okay uh i joined back off in 2003 so now it's 11th year uh i joined as a software engineer there so i was working on the actual program uh, this twin cat uh, which is like pc based control software like thing uh, i think uh, jahas sir has taken lot of quiz and all i think you are working on plc logic if i'm not wrong uh, the same thing can be running on a pc uh, pc as a soft plc concept so that means uh, there is a software which is running on the pc which converts the pc into a plc and that's where back off is uh, well known for and uh, the same logic which you have done now can be implemented and can be tested on your pc without physical hardware so with our software soft it's a soft plc yes so that means a software which is running on the device and where you can uh, like uh, like push some outputs or something or simulate something without any physical hardware okay and you can connect to the hardware through ethernet communication also that way so i joined in the software developments so i was actually i'm actually a software hardcore software developer uh but after 4 years in germany i decided to come back home and then i got this responsibility to start back off but i'm still a technical guy I still do programming and uh okay uh being a manager director i think uh, technical guy it's a bit crazy but uh, the sales guys help me so they take care of all the sales and i do the technical stuff uh basically today's presentation i have like divided into four parts because most of you don't know back off uh i think a little bit uh, glimpse of back off then uh, pc based control because uh, one has to understand uh, when we are talking like smart factory pc based control is a important parameter and uh, uh, this is something which i i will uh, talk through in my pc based control topic then industry 4.0 what is this about or smart factory or uh, this internet of things uh, there are two terms uh, but um, uh, both are talking the same thing and some uh, connectivity examples which i will be showing you so just uh, to get started uh, welcome to the back of world of automation and it so i say automation and it because automation is one part and it because pc based control so these are like two getting merged on the pc based platform uh, platform uh back of provides leading is automation technology with integrated it and global industries and consumers to to global industries and consumers so like different industries uh to just get started i think uh, you have seen this uh, spider cam i think most of you watch ipl matches or some other cricket matches i think you see the spider cam which is going through the complete stadium uh you see like the stadium is really big it's uh, uh and uh, you have this four strings of a uh, like a uh, which are like uh, connected to the stadium ground and this is controlling this camera there's a lot of automation behind that also so there are like four controllers which are like connected on the four uh, different uh, parts of the stadium and they are synchronously like talking to each other and controlling the length of the rope and this is also done using back off controls so i think the next time you are watching a cricket match with spider cam you know back off has done some part in it this is an invention of it's not a invention it's done by using see we are a control system manufacturers and uh, there are companies who are developing things using back off so uh, just to show like what applications can be uh, achieved with this these are the pc based manual control pc based control not manual control okay there is a joystick yeah, and then uh, i think the cameraman sees like joystick and he says like okay move this thing but the joystick input goes to a pc it's a input 
like I think you had a switch. So the same way the joystick is the input, which goes to the uh, to the PC, and the PC takes action. Like then, what command should be given to this different controllers all over the stadium, so that the camera moves in that direction. So you can maneuver that thing. Okay, definitely a human being is required because he has to control where the ball goes. I think the technology is still uh, uh, some advancement is still required that the ball can be tracked and automatically the camera can move. But uh, there is a human uh, intervention here. Other example is like if you have uh, gone to like Singapore airport, you can see on the terminal one this uh, 102, 1216 droplets or this uh, copper uh, I think drops which are making the dance. So these are like uh, 1216 servo axes uh, which are like control synchronously and to make a pattern. So just to uh, give your information like <coughs> so you can see like this uh, copper uh, thing hanging from the ceiling so these are like making like a, a dance and uh, synchronous to like a pattern which you want to create See this application looks, uh, it's an art, but uh, art and automation uh, because uh, the artists have designed like how this all drop should move uh, on a PC based platform definitely uh, because he has some software and these are giving commands to the soft PLC which is on the PC and controlling these 1216 drops. How this is controlled, this is like every drop has a, a servo motor which is connected on the top and which is making this uh, drop move so that the pattern is seen as the artist has designed. So, you can see like art and automation coming together here. So, one example, uh, wind turbines, I think most of you see wind turbines, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of installations going on around the around India and around the globe and uh, we are also in the wind turbine automation uh, packaging industry. So, you can see like uh, now I think we get a lot of this tetra pack and all this uh, packed foods. So, these are getting packed on back of platform, most not all of them, some of them. Uh, husky injection molding machines. So, back of controls are also used for injection molding machines. So, if you are using one of these bottles, so which are made on injection molding uh, machines or blow molding machines, I think Beko is a part of it. Robotic applications, uh, high precision CNC machines, I think Jasser is also working on one of the CNC, uh, one of the machines here. Uh, inspection testing machines, assembly and handling machines. So, this is like a, uh, it is for 28 years we are known for PC based control. So, we started our first PC based control in 1986 and now it is 28 years we are like working on this platform. In 1986 if you uh, know that like PCs were like really uh, not that advanced like what are they are today. So, uh, and, and that was the age when we started with this PC based control having a vision that uh, this is going to make a, a next revolution and you can see like today uh, every device today is having a PC means I think everybody has a mobile here which is smartphone which has uh, I do not know, uh, dual core or octa core, I, I got an octa core uh, system now. So, uh, the devices are getting more stronger and stronger nowadays because I think the application requirement what you have is also increasing. So, memory requirement is increasing and I see that uh, there is more to come. So, the Moore's law says that the processors are getting uh, like every time you get a, a higher CPU. So, I think uh, recently we, uh, I think on the uh, SPS IPC show, we showed a 32 core system from back off, 32 cores working on the simultaneously and we are using this multiple cores for different applications. If you see like the challenges have now changed. So, initially the challenge was like we had like really critical logic or algorithm to calculate, but the CPUs were not that strong enough. So, we are always like uh, hunting like how fast I can calculate this. However, now the CPUs are getting faster and uh, you see that now challenges on the other side, what things you have for me to calculate. Because when you say 32 core CPU, I should give them some work. So, it is like having uh, like so much uh, processing power, but you are not having that work. And if I see my uh, laptop also, it is with uh, like uh, some uh, dual core uh, system, 
but I'm using it for my presentations and all. And if I see my task manager, it's actually consuming five percent of my processing speed. So that means I'm not utilizing the the, the highest of it. So I see like in the industrial world, because we have like a lot of real-time data, cyclic data. So every time, uh, every say two milliseconds, when you write a PLC logic, you have a cycle time and it has to scan things. So that's where I think we can use this capabilities of a PC in a, a better way. And the good thing is we don't have to develop a lot of uh, things. The processes are developed by Intel and all other like uh, these processor companies. And we have a software which can convert these controllers into a soft PLC for machine logic. And this will help. You are with me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Okay. So uh, that's about Bikoff. Okay. Bikoff is pioneer in PC-based control, originator of I/O models. So I think uh, you uh, these are like slice I/Os. Tomorrow, I think if you are visiting Bikoff booth, I think you will get to see. Originator of the Fieldbus system, Ethercat. Uh, again, uh, Fieldbus. I think you people. I think you know here uh, like four papers or other thing. Ethercad is one of the fieldwork system which was developed by Beckhoff, uh, which is a bit different. Uh, uh, just to give you a glimpse, like a normally like any fieldwork system, what you know in market today is like you send a telegram or any um, message we send, you have to receive this complete message and then process it and then respond. Whereas Ethercad is something like where it is on the fly. So that is, uh, I'm sending a telegram through all of you, and everybody fits in like uh, hits bits in the Ethernet. Uh, uh, this frame, corrects the CRC checksum and it goes to the next. So you are not receiving the complete frame. It is on the fly, you are inserting the data in the in the frame. So this makes this uh, Ethercat protocol really fast because uh, it is like a flying train not stopping on the station and the passengers are going out of the station, uh, out of the train and getting on the train on the fly and automatically the, the count of the number of passengers is changing. So whereas in other cases like the uh, like in the other telegrams just like you have to get a uh, message through, receive it, process it, and then respond back. So this is like a, uh, adding some delay. So whereas Ethercad technology is like uh, a bit different. Uh, okay, we are also inventor of X-ray system. I think tomorrow, uh, if you are visiting our booth, you can get to see uh, one of this X-ray system in function. Okay, PC-based control. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, what do you think PC based control, like uh, how a PC can act as a, a controller? I think you have developed some logics. So, any idea? I think you know the scheduler on the PC works with a one millisecond scheduler. If you are working with, uh, I think if you write a C program, you write a, like a, say wait for a single object, I think the minimum time you can give is one millisecond. That is the real time operating system from uh, Windows. Uh, whereas, like in uh, when you are talking about PC based control, you can go up to like microsecond level also. So, Beckhoff has developed a, a real time kernel to convert this PC into a real time controller. Because this PC has this timer zero interrupt which is coming from the hardware, and this timer zero interrupt is something which is causing this rescheduler to act again and again. So, that the tasks are prioritized and they can uh, start functioning as per their scheduled time. So, PC based control. Uh, makes uh, like now you have like a, a, a what, what you can say like a, a process which is fast and uh, we can go up to like microsecond level because of uh, the real time kernel from TwinCat or this uh, PC based software which I have today and this gives you a high processing power. Again PC uh, based control means its PLC is already on the PC and PC is already known for IT platform. It is a Windows based or uh, any other operating system based. So, connectivity to like FTP server or cloud or internet connectivity and other things. These are coming inbuilt already. So, we are using our laptop is like with some operating system. So, all these are like IT features which are already inbuilt in this. And again, we are adding it to uh, our automation layer to it. So, IT and automation can come together. It is a blend of uh, both PC based control. So, connectivity challenges with IT platform are taken care by PC based control. So, if you see a small PLC running with, I do not know, a, a microcontroller based PLC. Uh, okay, good. You can program with your serial port and everything. However, if you want to connect this small PLC to a, a higher level, uh, there are connected challenges. That means uh, you have need some converters, and uh, because nowadays I think if you see my laptop, there is no serial port. So uh, these challenges are going to increase because people are like talking more about Ethernet connectivity, PC-based control, and all. And uh, this way, I think if you are using a PC control, I, I can just uh, hook in a, a 
uh, Ethernet port uh, of the PC directly to uh, a LAN network and I can uh, access the variables very easily. You can perform multiple tasks on a one CPU. So, now you are coming with a like a multiple core systems on the PC. So, uh, for example, in an application where you want to run say like a PLC and a motion control simultaneously, uh, you can run this logic on different cores on the, uh, on the PC. So, you can say like one core should do a PC or the PLC logic control, the other core should do like motion control and both are simultaneously finishing and then doing the communication with the field bus system. So, yeah, ladder is there are like multiple languages. Ladder is one of them. So it will be, it will work for any any PLC compatible with uh, any PLC. Not with any PLC. It's a soft PLC already on board. Programming is ladder, but uh, there is a soft PLC on board. The PLC is not a, a, a hardware. The PC itself is a PLC. In this I case, can connect it to some machine. Suppose yes. Developing some yes, yes. Okay. yes. 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 Y
So if you have say like 40 machines in your lab, you can get the development or any every student can get a, a CD of Upeko. He can install on his PC and he can start developing his program free of cost because development pattern is free. So what you just need is like one hardware where you can just test it. Which PC hardware have you standard See, uh, Backoff has makes our own PC also because uh, for testing and all you can use your own PC platform. However, I think uh, for real time applications you need PC which are tested which can give deterministic uh, like what you can say cycle time and everything because a uh, lot of PCs have jitters because when you have like graphical interface and all. So this gives a lot of jitter in the in the cycle time and this is not expected on the real machine. So we have uh, like a selected few controllers which are first of all uh, as we are into industrial grade uh, we want this process to be long lasting because if you see today I have uh, bought a laptop from Dell which is like some processor. If I go back to Dell in two months and ask the same processor you will not get it because he, they keep on changing. It's a consumer market and they adapt to changes very fast. Whereas in the industrial world we want that the same processor should be available for a long, long time. So that's the reason I think Intel has this uh, embedded uh, processor uh, series. So which they have defined this is embedded and which will be uh, available for like last next 10-15 uh, years or 20 years. So we select them, test them on our platform, see the performance and then select them for our. So we are working on Intel and ARM Cortex A8 or multiple systems. Okay. So networking is easier in okay. It's really high tech. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, complexity wise, I think if you see in 1970s, I think motion control was a different part. If you see a, a old machine, motion control was different, PLC control was different, and PCs were normally used for some SCADA or something initially. What we uh, did was like we can integrate all of them. Uh, in one platform, so PC based control. So for medium and small PLCs where you need 8 inputs, 8 outputs, you can still use the microcontroller based PLCs. However, you can uh, as it complexity increase, so PC platforms are getting cheaper and cheaper day by day. So I think uh, days are not long that you will see that microcontrollers instead of microcontroller PLC based, you will use uh, PC based control in that platforms. So you can do like multiple functions like visualization, PLC, motion control. Uh, communication, scientific automation or extreme fast control where you want to control some outputs for at microsecond levels and special functions also on this PC like cloud, cloud connectivity and other things. Like a PC based control and PLC based control. Mm -hmm. So, exact what difference uh, will you get like? See, uh, and what, uh, what I would, uh, I would change your question. Yeah, what PLC difficulty? based uh, control, I think we are, PC also has a PLC. Yeah. So I think you are asking what difference it makes to PC and microcontroller based PLC. Yeah. Like right? suppose PLC, they are directly writing program, they are in ladder yeah. diagram. Mm -hmm. And PC based some, your language are NC code or something you are writing mm -hmm. and controlling your motion controller and motors. Yeah. So <coughs> both what uh, uh, give the different results and what difficulty you will find in both the cases. Yeah. I think uh, see PLCs uh, are doing a dedicated uh, task mm -hmm. normally. They have their own uh, program and does the dedicated task. Whereas PC is more like flexible. flexible. Yeah. So okay, it can do the dedicated task, but apart from that, it can do a lot of other things like uh, data storage, analysis, and all this thing. So if you have a machine which should uh, work as an island of control, that means it should just do this. Don't worry about the world. I think go for a small PLC, if it is small number like 8 input rate or, or I don't know some uh, small IOs, then use that small PLC and it does the work. However, today is the world of connectivity because if you see like what we browse, normally if you go to Google Chrome and search for anything on Google and next time you go to some page, you will see automatically an ad coming up with that uh, particular like if you have search for a camera, the camera advertisement come. What it shows, Google knows what we are searching, it is a world of connectivity. So, I think everybody like uh, then automatically knows that this guy is looking for a camera and you get a camera pop up. So it's more intelligent nowadays. So intelligence is built everywhere. And now now you have to decide whether that intelligence should come also on the shop floor or not. So this is like uh, so if you have an island of control, you should do a like some specific task, definitely PL and if the PLC is the right platform for it, you can do for it. But if you say like tomorrow I have this machine is not only one machine, I have like say 20 machines in my plant 
they should be connected to a, a ERP system or MS system. I think then connectivity is a big challenge. So I think then uh, it's better to go for PC based control because you can. Through program like a letter or something, so I can change the. Program. You can do online changes. Online. That is possible. Okay. You can change the ladder diagram and everything. But ladder diagram is the, is the machine logic. Apart from that, the connectivity to the higher level. Mm. Like, for example, if you say, uh, I want to uh, say manufacture 100 uh, units of this product on this machine. Nowadays, what happens is like it goes as a paper and the worker sees, uh -huh, this is what uh, is to be produced. He punches in, uh, this is uh, the task and the machine produces. However, it is like more human driven. <coughs> if he punches in some different number or some error happens, uh, the machine will start producing, I don't know, something else. Uh, whereas the same way, I think if you can control it from your central server, that the machine gets a, a recipe, this is what you have to produce, and this is the quantity, and this is the time when you have to produce it, this will be more intelligent. That's called the smart factory. So that is where I'm coming to so with this PC-based control. Because then it is more in the like uh, the control of the like the management or the the production planning. Better control. Better control yes. Does it provide us a virtual kind of the motion also before the actual production? Uh, see, uh, it's the development phase. There are two phases. First is like development phase where you want to develop some logic, but once it is developed, I don't think you need a virtual phase because it's working. So you need a machine where it works then. In the PC based control. So, but uh, in a virtual phase or simulation phase in development uh, 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 is also available in this. So, you can simulate access, there is a scope view, you can scope how these motions are uh, going through. So, lot of things and we should do a twin cat program training. <laughs> okay, this is like a standard PC platform. Uh, you can see like display, hard disk, uh, flash memory, these are like standard interfaces which are available on a PC. Then it is installed with an operating system like Windows 7, Windows XP or any Windows C uh, uh, thing. Then you install like some application pro softwares, can be like Microsoft Word, Office or anything. And this TwinCat, which is a soft PLC, it comes also as a, on a CD. It gets installed as an a, a application program on this PC. And this gives a real-time kernel to this PC to convert it into a, 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 a what you can say, a, a soft PLC or soft motion controller. So, and then using the general purpose IOs like Ethernet or uh, say serial port or RS-485 or anything which is available on the PC, you can talk to like all these field bus systems. So this is how the PC based control works. Any questions? What is this real time PLC? That is TwinCat, that is the soft PLC. That is a soft PLC. Yeah. Because uh, you cannot expect that a, PL, uh, a PLC should stop uh, because some uh, say like for example you are doing some video streaming. The PLC should start working, uh, it should have higher priority. So, uh, it should not uh, get preempted with some other uh, like task which is happening on the PC. Another thing is whatever software you write on your soft PLC and the one which you could, let's say for a drive, in between you require some input output modules also like you show. You show yeah. So, where is that here? These are connected on this Ethernet and IR modules. Oh. Yeah. It's outside. outside, it's not on the PC. Yeah, outside. Yeah. So, PC is just doing the computing and getting the data, input and output through uh, combination field bus and uh, this IO models are connected outside. IO models you can say drive technology or motion control. I think my friend will be talking about the motion control in the next, next part. Okay. So this basically like industrial PC, it can be used as HMI or soft PLC, motion control, special functions like, uh, like uh, can be connectivity and all the things. And then uh, out of the PC you have this IOs, drive technology with motors which are getting controlled. Okay, so basic components for a, a PC based control is like PC, the software which is a soft PLC, uh, the physical IO models which are outside to connect the physical world, uh, sensors and actuators which can be connected here and then the motion uh, like uh, where you can say like a, uh, the drive technology, it can be stepper, uh, servo and all that. Okay. So we have then again connectivity uh, because this is an important part which comes for the smart factory because we are now okay we got to know what is PC control it does this task however now this PC should get connected to the higher world to the uh, next level so for this connectivity becomes a, a important uh, parameter so for example like you can have IT protocols like WLAN Bluetooth TCP/IP communication RAS communication 
FTP, VPN. So, I think this you know from the IT, uh, IT jargon, jargons. And these are like uh, getting important now also for uh, the industry 4.0 or the smart factory. I guess this is an edge over the other original one because you can get the wireless technology embedded here. You don't need actually it's get IT. wires and all. Yeah, yeah, it's IT based. So, all the IT specific uh, advantages you can get on the PC platform. Wireless is one, it's only connectivity. <coughs> However, like uh, for example, uh, there are like lot of industrial protocols here. IAC, I think uh, 61850 uh, or IC uh, uh, 61400. Uh, these are like protocols used for like, uh, like uh, suppose like there is a, a power station producing some power. Say from uh, Delhi, you are producing some power and then distributing it to some remote locations. And there is a one power station which is there in at Mirror. Probably, I do not know Mirror if it goes from here and it is producing some power. So, it has to send the data to the central station. This is the power produced by me. So, that it reduces the load on the central station. So, this communication protocols are already working. This is like called smart grid. Uh, so, that means uh, you can actually know what uh, power is required in that uh, grid, see what is produced there and then send uh, or uh, transfer the power or uh, the delta power so that it uh, suffices the requirement of the grid. So, uh, this is already happening. So, the smart grid is already getting implemented. At least I do not know in Delhi's region, but uh, Maharashtra, this smart grid project is very active. So, yeah. maybe also. That FED, I think that yeah. is yeah. So, apart from that, okay, uh, connecting to like a higher level, like uh, it can be using one of these VPN and all. Uh, so, PC, I think a uh, lot of people in your colleges, you have like LAN, and when you are outside of a college, you can connect through VPN, V virtual private network. So, these all things are also is important for this uh, PC based control. Say for example, there is a PC working in my factory <coughs> and uh, it, the machine is supplied by someone and he wants to access the, the PC remotely because normally the, the machine builder sells the machine and normally now there are no boundaries. So, Indian people are selling machines in uh, like all over the globe and uh, maintenance becomes a challenge. So, he has to travel all the way to that location to maintain or see what is the issue on the machine. However, he can sitting in his uh, office, he can log on to this system without all the visa problems, without traveling. So, within few minutes and he can see what is going on on that machine. So, this all things becomes easier because of the IT platform. It is not something which is back off or uh, we have developed. It is coming from the IT world and this with the PC based control uh, is, 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 uh, uh, is the added advantage. Any questions? Okay. Then I think uh, also it is uh, as I showed you this spider cam camera. So, you have to have a cyclic data communication which is real time. So, in that case there were four PCs which are working in, in the stadium. So, this four PC has to real time uh, sim, uh, send data to each other. So, it deterministically because if it does not send then the, uh, the spider cam will always like uh, vibrate. It will not be stable. So, you will not get a, a clear picture. So, if this communication is not uh, happening correctly. So, that is the problem. So, this is a cyclic real time data. So, this PC should also communicate in real time world. This is an added advantage and a cyclically means it if this is something like a data which can come as it wants. So, it has no real time importance. So, for example, what is the production going on? So, if it comes say a second later or second before, I think nobody really worries. Only thing is it should come. So, that is a cyclic and cyclic is like something which is real time where you want it should be synchronized so that. <coughs> okay, now industry 4.0. So now I think you got to know about PC based control. Uh, I think you will get to see some of the PC based controls uh, in on the show also. So at Pekoff has one of them. So other uh, supplier also have some PC based control. Uh, now let's talk about industry 4.0. Um, okay, before I uh, start with this industry 4.0, what you think it is. I think somebody has read on this smart factory or industry 4.0. Any idea? Okay. How the industry works today? So, there are like say 10 machines on the shop floor. How are they working? How the maintenance takes place? I think so people like uh, they have some maintenance schedule. I think you must have gone to factory. So, they have maintenance schedule or maybe I saw in the toilet also they have some maintenance schedule like when to wash and so. Uh, that is human driven. So, the person has to come and then say like, yes, I have to do this, this, this and it is a sheet. So, but it is like a person has to do on his own. 
what if the toilet himself tells okay now it is time you should do maintenance. So, this is a difference in industry 4.0. See for example, you have 10 machines which are working uh, like say 24 7 and uh, maintenance okay is always a challenge because uh, the maintenance injuries are few, they have to maintain multiple machines and they, they actually have to schedule that based on maintenance. So, and these are like time based maintenance which they do, it is not like a, when it is required it is done and uh, okay, this is one example. So, uh, what we can do here is like in, instead the machine knows its health and when it is ill, it tells the maintenance guy oh I need you because there is some problem on my machine. So, this will be more intelligent right. So, this is how the industry 4.0 is uh, like the basis of industry 4.0 and that is where the connectivity where PLC uh, st uh, standalone PLC and PC based control is differentiated. Because the, in the PC based control I can connect to this all IT world and tell like I can send SMS from my controller, I can send emails from my, uh, my PLC to the maintenance guys to management and they can take care. And how this can be done? If we have the critical parameters measured, for example, like what is the power my machine is consuming, what is like condition monitoring, what are the vibrations which are coming on the machine, I can uh, from this I can actually know the health of my machine. So, for example, like if today I am for this x amount of uh, bottles to produce, I am consuming say uh, say x amount of uh, or y amount of uh, power, and tomorrow for the same quantity I am uh, having y plus delta y. This delta y y increase the power is increased what can be reasons. So, this has to be uh, answered by the maintenance guys or the machine says like okay, there is a motor which is running there which is causing uh, the maybe the bearing has uh, come to an extent like it is giving more friction and it has to be changed. So, that it is preventive maintenance. So, which knows its health and does maintenance because we go to doctors for routine checkup right and there is one way that uh, I never go to doctors, I am bit scared of it, doctors. So, I would go to them only when I am ill. So, this is like uh, like I know when I, I need a doctor. So, that way the machine should know when it needs a doctor or when he needs a maintenance engineer. So, that is uh, uh, like the same way with this condition monitoring. So, so there are like a lot of foreign transformations which you can do with this vibration analysis and you can know like okay the vibration of the machines are increased. So, there is uh, something wrong and uh, the machine uh, tells like okay uh, the, the service engineer or the maintenance engineer that the vibrations are not normal. So, it has uh, crossed a particular bandwidth and give me uh, now you need we need a maintenance guy in this case. So, industry 4.0 it is a global globally the challenges are same. So, if you see any industry the same the challenges are always same. Uh, industry 4.0 tries to provide a smart solution to overcome these challenges. So, how these ch uh, challenges can be overcome. So, a new re industry revolution happening globally and PC based control technology is enabler for smart factory concept. So, uh, what is industry 4.0? It is a revolution of com uh, computerization of manufacturing industry. So, we have computers all over now, it is in our uh, iPad or our iPhone or I do not know your smartphones, they all have uh, a PC control or computerization is there. The same thing is now also is required on the manufacturing industry and uh, we see like uh, already this is changing and uh, the goal is smart factory and it is characterized by networking of man, machine and business processes. So, uh, when you see like a, a marketing, you see like a with 100 grams of lays you get 20 percent extra, a uh, typical example. Uh, how uh, this is good uh, from the marketing point of view, but there are a lot of changes which needs to be done on the uh, on the industry on the shop floor level. So, the, uh, the packets has to be changed, the grammage which has to be dosed into this uh, package has to change. This as of now it is happening manually. So, people have to go there and with the marketing changes he, they have to see that everything is synchronized and then it it works ok. In most of the industry is manual, but uh, now there are other industries which are coming which are like getting this marketing involved also with the uh, the shop flow. So, this has to adapt and this is something like I would say with the business processes you have to adapt to on the shop floor also. So, that is how the industry 4.0 is. So, real time data sharing. So, getting the real time data from the machines up to the, uh, the management level. Say for example, a machine is down for 2 hours, a maintenance guy should know that there is this machine is not working for the last 2 hours. So, you should come and see what is going wrong, wrong with this machine. Uh, so, the maintenance guy should not uh, tell that oh I was not aware, I, I do not know that this machine is down. 
So, the machine should immediately send a SMS or send some uh, emails or something that these are the problems on my machine and so you have to come and then see like uh, my machine is up again on a uh, high priority. So, after then you can also escalate this from the machine itself. So, you say in 2 hours if I inform the maintenance guy he is not coming, he is not able to solve the problem. So, 4 hours then it goes to like uh, the shop, uh, shop floor manager then can go to the director. So, you can define this hierarchy. So, the machine is intelligent that I need help. So, if my this uh, maintenance engineer is not able to solve the problem, then it should be escalated so that it gets uh, um, the problem gets resolved in that case. Or it can be also uh, like uh, for example, like in the night shift you see like lot of people are like not doing their job correctly. Uh, it is actually a phenomenon also in, in uh, our, our uh, state. So, uh, when the machine is down for long time, so you can actually say okay, what is wrong on this machine? So, why it, it did not produce for like from say 1 to 5 pm, uh, 1 am to 5 a, am. So, then you know that the worker was not working on the machine and it was uh, dozing or something. Else. So, you can actually analyze this also. So, this real time data sharing is important. Adaptability and customization. So, adapting to the changes and customizing uh, like I said like the marketing example. So, you have to customize uh, the machine outputs based on the things or it can be also in the line say like you have multiple machines working and if one, one of the machine is down for some reason so, and the previous machine should also scale down its production because it should not stack up the intermediate uh, stock. So, for example, like uh, you see in a, a line say like uh, there are multiple machines working on some particular product and if one machine is producing just say 60 parts per minute and the other one is 30 parts per minute. So, you always have two machines in between so that the same production line uh, output is uh, maintained. So, if one of the 30 parts per machine machine is down, so this machine should scale down its production so that the line output is reduced. It should not produce 60 so that we have a stack in between and then it is causing a lot of uh, intermediate uh, products. So, that customization and adaptation is important. Efficient use of installed resources. So, whenever we have a res uh, like some machines or resources, so it should be efficiently utilized. So, that is important. So, integration of customer and business partners, uh, what it means? It is a next level. So, uh, so customer places an order. So, order goes to uh, order goes to machine and uh, immediately it sends the data to a business partner. I think lot of, lot of you, I think, I think almost all of you are reading newspapers. They are the same newspapers, but I think there is a next generation newspaper which are coming up which will be customized for you. That means, it will say hello Mr. Kataria, this is the newspaper for you. What it means? The newspaper will be customized for me and it will be produced based on like this is the end user. So, it is a customer driven. So, when I say I want a, a newspaper with more business and a uh, little less on say, uh, nowadays you see like a lot of uh, uh, what you can say masala, like uh, uh, you can see like a lot of movies and all that thing. So, you can say like okay, I want this, then give me this. So, the next generation newspaper will be produced as per my requirement. So, there is uh, this uh, thing is going on and probably in the next 3, 4 years you will find that customized newspaper coming up. So, what it says like it is a customer driven uh, integration. So, when the customer says this is what I want, so when while printing it automatically print, prints the same thing and it is printed for uh, this end destination which is like Jitendra Kataria sitting in Pune somewhere. And this is something important. So, and backward it should say like what are the business partners. So, for example, for my production I need some partners which are like giving me some resources. So, they should automatically from the machine itself should get or not machine, but the, the system itself should get information that this is what my requirement is and you should provide me this, these products. So, this is the next generation which is coming up. And uh, so, this integration of where it is consumed, the customers and where it is produced and the partners for my uh, uh, production has to be integrated together. So, this is the industrial fourth revolution. I think just uh, glimpsing into the past, the history, the first revolution was like uh, the factory was born. I think uh, in 1980s like people were doing all their not 1980s, 18th century say, I was not there. Uh, 18th century I think people were like maybe doing uh, their uh, task at home or something. Uh, so, some were cobblers and something. However, uh, the factory was born. So, so, the concept of bringing all the people together and making them sit in one factory and developing something that was the first revolution. 
that I have searched on the web, I found this. If there is some discrepancy, so sorry. <laughs> so I, uh, this was the first revolution. The second revolution was the mass production. So assembly lines were developed. So for a particular product, so how the assembly lines can be created. So this was the mass production uh, revolution. The third revolution was digital revolution, which we are still going through. So there were, I think, a lot of electronic parts, uh, like you see, like uh, transistors, and uh, so you can see, like uh, it's the complexity of the, uh, the uh, digital in, uh, instruments are increasing. So this is the third revolution, which we are still in that phase. And this uh, continuation, we also developed like a like, lot of high-speed data processing, image processing, robotic and automation, mobile communication. So this is like still the third revolution, and it's continuing. Now the fourth revolution is the Internet of Things. Uh, the web isn't like it's connectivity. So the internet or web is not merely developing; it's exploding, and numbers prove it. So you can see like number of devices which are produced. So it's like really having an exponential growth. So I think in uh, nine, in uh, 2000 I had got my first PC, which was like oh no, not 2000, 1997, which was 300 megahertz. Nobody uses 300 megahertz today. I think even your uh, your phone is with one gigahertz plus. What it shows, like uh, also that days, I think mobile was like really like a compost box, is, is, which was really big. Huh? And today you see like really slim, uh, like small boxes coming. And now you see like all of these devices have internet. So the uh, it, the connectivity has become a, a great uh, great thing. You have like digital control homes, iPad control homes, and so uh, maybe the white goods like your washing machine, it can be controlled through your through your uh, internet. So this revolution is uh, increasing a lot. So what it shows, like it will not be long that uh, the the home, like where you when you're going home, that it automatically adjusts adjusts to your requirement. Let's say like uh, your car is coming to a, a particular GPS location, and automatically uh, AC in your uh, home is getting started, or there is hot water in the geyser which is uh, warmed up. So automatically things will get adapted to your requirement. Smart homes, smart homes smart. yeah. So, so we are talking about smart industry, but it is smartness is coming everywhere. So <laughs> smart grid, smart homes. And sometimes I really feel scared, like <laughs> what all things will be happening around. But uh, this is the revolution which we are going through, and uh, <laughs> and and to be, uh, and we are part of it. So we are uh, enhance or we are uh, the ones who are encouraging this. So let's see how things goes. <laughs> so the connectivity is a challenge. So the purpose of Industry 4.0 is to make manufacturing more flexible, more efficient, more sustainable through communication and intelligence, so intelligence built into the system and resulting in increased competitiveness. So we are, uh, the competitiveness uh, is increased. That means uh, now it is not required that you produce a product and keep it in stock. Produce as per requirement but just in time so that uh, you know that then you do not have like a inventory built in and all that thing. So that is the smartness which we have to build in. So let us take a quick look of few possible steps towards this goal. I do not know if this is interesting, but let us get through. Uh, industry 4.0 steps. So, building logical intelligence in the in all the elements of manufacturing. When you say all the elements, it has like uh, I have jotted down few. It is like planning, when you plan something to be done on your uh, in the shop floor, uh, sourcing, storing, processes, producing, packaging, quality control, dispatch, maintenance. So, the, the list is huge. So, you have to build this logical intelligence in every element of manufacturing. Then making the machine automated, network and communicable with open field bus protocol. So what it means like uh, say a machine builder is building a machine, he should not just build island of control, he should also give like this is like an object in my complete system and this object should give me some uh, inputs, it is like uh, uh, object oriented programming. So this object should give me like these are the parameters, critical parameters of my machine for machine health, these are critical parameters for production, so that it gives me information on say like a, a, a LAN or network so that I can access that uh, information and adapt my complete uh, line or complete uh, industry to this uh, thing. And again field bus protocol is important because uh, if you have selected some uh, um, controller which is with like dedicated PLC controller, uh, then I think it is conversion becomes a challenge. So you have to have that uh, kind of intelligence in that protocol. Establishing communication networks between machine and machine and men, so that machine and machine they are neighbors, so they should know what is happening with other machine, so that they can adapt. For example, I told you this uh, 60, 30, 30 example, 
when one machine is down, so the other machine should adapt to the line output. So, this is really important. Enabling exchange of real time data from machine and processes to the central server. So, uh, that can be like power consumption, say for example, in the industry normally or say also your university, you get one electricity bill, but you really do not know what is consumed by which department, a mechanical department is consuming what power. So, you can make a, a drive here itself like, okay, I get a bill of say x amount and out of this x, this uh, x 1 is the consumption of mechanical department, x 2 is like electrical department. So, then you know, okay, this is the total bill and this is the department which are consuming it. And you can also then find out like, okay, if this is uh, how the pattern is, whether it is increasing certain, okay, there is a vacation period, so no power consumption. So, you have to uh, build a kind of a intelligence, how and when it is increasing and why it is increasing. So, so for example, like nobody is in this uh, hall and uh, still the lights are on, so you are consuming power. So, there should be intelligence built into this, this unit itself also, so can be one option. Uh, fuel consumption, so uh, we have power problems, so DG, DG and uh, diesel generators are working. So, how the fuel consumption is that, uh, for what requirement it is burned, so we should know that. Compressed air, a lot of machines have this uh, pneumatics and pneumatic is like not that efficient, uh, but we still need it. Uh, so, we have to also measure like how much uh, compressed air we have used and what kind of uh, pressures we are maintaining. So, this all things can be um, done, flow, part produced, part rejected, machine on off time. Uh, I give some examples. So, I think this is the critical parameters real time data exchange which is required for from the machine to the higher level. Uh, getting actionable shop floor data to management for measuring manufacturing critical parameters. Say for example, uh, a part is produced on a machine, uh, the, uh, the management should know what is actually the, uh, the cost required for manufacturing that uh, particular part. So, it can be like the time required for that part on a particular machine. Uh, it can be the uh, the power consumed by that machine for producing that part because a lot of uh, people in India they do job work, so they take a job from something and and produce for someone. So they should actually uh, know what are the uh, critical parameters for for my machine, and what actually is the uh, the the cost involved behind. Like can be uh, resources cost, can be uh, like man manpower cost. So you can calculate that through all these critical parameters then parts produced, how much rejection was there, what rejection will cost, machine off time, up time and some consumption etcetera. Enabling decisions for, by, for optimizing machine output, so it can be monitoring machine efficiency, assembly line efficiency, monitoring cost variations, uh, condition monitoring, taking decisions for technology operations for machines and data acquisition etcetera. Analyzing real time data and predicting doubt time, uh, <coughs> predicting down times. So, this is like a like a predicting down times and uh, for planning alternatives. So, like uh, predict failures, so uh, when there are vibrations of the machine, so predicting them or uh, uh, you see like power consumption has gone up or some resources in, uh, consumption has gone up. So, you should know that there is something wrong and uh, this machine needs some kind of analysis. Trigger maintenance process autonomously, so the machine should trigger the maintenance process automatically. Enabling automation network management for uh, product packaging, logistics and delivery. So, automatically when something is produced, so logistics should be informed uh, that uh, now this part is ready. So, you should organize uh, some like query agency or some logistics so that this part is delivered to the end destination automatically from the production line. So, there should not be a, a human labor involved in also this uh, logistic part. So, enabling production planning and management, uh, managing the supply chain efficiently. So, integrating customers and business partners. So, as I said in the uh, previous example, where uh, customer and uh, business partner are also part of this complete system. So, PC, uh, PC based control is the core technology of smart factory. So, if you see this, it is all connectivity, which is important. And connectivity, I think then you are talking about an IT platform, and IT platform, then you are talking about PC based control. So, PC based control is the core technology for all this uh, connectivity. So, again requirement of uh, smart factory could be uh, automating the assembly lines and networking machines with M to M communication capabilities, higher efficiency machines, smartly automated quality control setups with visual inspection, automated packaging, ERP SAP integration, MIS for quicker and effective decisions. So, uh, you know this SAP and uh, this ERP systems which are coming up. So, they are doing lot of planning. So, we have to integrate from the shop floor also to this higher level ERP systems. So, this is important. 
and this is like horizontal and vertical integration. Vertical integration means uh, you are talking to the SCADA system, MES, ERP with PLC and horizontal means PLC to PLC communication. So, it can be like uh, between multiple PLCs from uh, with different filibus systems. Also, the challenge is also to have this different filibuses uh, getting on the one platform and uh, that is where I think this factory floor automation is important. Uh, that is the fields PLC with field bus. Cloud connectivity, so uh, the PLC is directly writing to the cloud. There is one demo also in the exhibition uh, where I think this uh, uh, Titan machine is connected to the cloud and it is writing some parameters from the machine directly to the cloud. Okay, it is not built to the uh, highest extent, but few parameters are sent, but we can uh, just to demonstrate how the connectivity plays a vital role there. So, how to start? So, I think we have to identify the assembly lines. Okay, we have, I have taken industry as uh, one line as an example. Identify machines for acquiring data. So, when you see like 8 10 machines, so we have to identify this uh, machines which uh, where I have to uh, connect the data. We have to do analysis on them, see like whether uh, how I can uh, communicate with them. So, some machines have an open protocol, but some machines as a like we are already procured with some PLC platform and uh, then I think important is like we should have this uh, converters in between, so that uh, it comes on the IT platform and we can talk to them. Again uh, one important thing in this uh, all uh, uh, all smart factory phase is like adapting your PLC programs also for this, so that it adapts to this uh, uh, changes which, which the management takes place through IT platform. So, I think important decision is like when you uh, when somebody procures a machine, he should ask this thing like uh, okay, it is not an island of control, I want this line control also to be integrated and these are the critical parameters on the machine. So, the OEM uh, or the machine builder should also give me some uh, okay, you should build this intelligence in the machine. If not, then it is just like acquiring data or the status of the machine from some IOs that we can do. So, how data transfer takes place with the help of cloud? Um, that is, is technology. Yeah, computing. cloud computing or you can say not cloud computing, more cloud computing is one of them. Uh, what it does is like the PLC is uh, getting the, uh, it has the critical parameters which are measured and uh, there are like OPC UA layer uh, through uh, uh, which is writing to the cloud. It is like uh, some servers, Amazon has a database server on the cloud, Amazon cloud is there. So, we are writing to the cloud directly there and why it is important because sitting here I can see what is the health of my machine and uh, maybe uh, you can connect because normally you see like industries are growing nowadays. So, like uh, for example, like Beckhoff had one factory before, now we have like six factories and every factory if it writes to the cloud then it is easy for the management to know what is happening on the every machine. So, this cloud connectivity is important because whenever I get up in the morning I can just see what is happening on my in industry, what are the orders coming in and whether we are uh, in time and if there is some problem then I can actually go deep below because uh, I get a dashboard and from that dashboard I can uh, browse in, in into the system and see what is the critical parameters happening on the particular line or something. So, this intelligence has to be built in, in the cloud with the and this can be built in with the numbers, it is like a big data. So, with this data how can you uh, really make a, a logical thing, it is a really big challenge and every industry is different. So, every industry has its unique parameters. So, uh, things which are important for the plastic industry are not important for say tire industry. So, we have to find out this critical parameters and see that we adapt this uh, connectivity thing uh, to the higher level. And then uh, we have to list the parameters required to and from every unit, every <coughs> unit means every machine or uh, any other unit and define the data exchange mechanism. So, when you say like uh, what is the data required from every machine or every PLC, this uh, requirement or uh, has to be defined and see how we can exchange the data and also we have to see what data I have to give to the machine. Say for example, I have to produce 10 parts of these bottles. So, there should be a way that I can send this data to the machine so that it can take this input and then adapt its production process based on this uh, input received from the higher level and define the integration level where all the units can be integrated to the controller. So, higher level integration with MES, ERP and all that thing. These are like few basic steps, but uh, easy to jot down, but difficult to implement <laughs> because uh, there are already existing machines on the shop floor and uh, getting them on this uh, common platform to communicate is a big challenge. Okay, if it is a new machine, we can always control what, what they will produce, uh, they will provide. However, for the existing system is a challenge. Sir, how can I secure that the, my data is just uh, safe? Uh, see, can the yeah, uh, the, uh, there is a 
uh, when you are using this, uh, what you can say, uh, OPC UA, uh, there is this uh, safety uh, inbuilt in this, security inbuilt. I can, I will come to it, I think it is the next slide. So, when you are talking about like uh, processes like motion, RFID, energy monitoring, condition monitoring, intelligent subsystem motion, these are connected to the field bus systems with uh, different field bus communication. Uh, good thing with back off is like we have like lot of protocol converters. On our converters, we can communicate with different field buses. It can be Profibus, device net, Ethernet IP or anything and uh, we can talk to them and then gather the data on a common platform and then give it to the PC control which is like one machine and this machine can talk to a MES, ERP and higher level. So, internet of things and can get, go to the smart grid, smart building, smart logistics, smart mobility and the same thing with the second machine. So, and this all are connected through OPC UA which gives the safety inbuilt. It is a OPC UA is a, 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 a unified architecture layer of OPC and uh, which can be used for communication. And end of the day, this communication happens inside the, uh, what you can say, in, inside the enterprise or a, a LAN network. And this higher level connectivity becomes through your own uh, IT network. So, IT gives you this safety inbuilt. Any questions? I think the, uh, all okay or? It's fine, I think. So, basic principle of industry 4.0 is that by connecting machines, workpieces and systems, we are creating intelligent networks along the entire value chain that can control each other autonomously. So, uh, this was uh, like a concept given by like a German government is uh, like, uh, like uh, making it marketing this. So, why government is so uh, like uh, interested in this? Because you see like in European countries, a lot of manufacturing setups are going out. So, they are coming to uh, like uh, Asian countries because the labor is cheap there and all. And they still want that manufacturing setup should still stay in Europe or USA or inter of things. Or. And with this, I think they can reduce the manpower required for controlling the machines. And uh, that is why this is propagated by the, uh, by the government, so that the business stays in that states or that countries. And, uh, and this is like, this is important. So, autonomous control from the machine itself of everything. So, that makes it more competitive. So, world of production will become more network. So, so we, uh, network means okay, when you need a part, you can produce that part. So, it will not be like you have produced something and you are stacking something. So, production will be more networked. That was, and it means complexity on production and supply network will increase drastically. So, when you say the customer orders something and uh, a, a paper is produced somewhere just for Mr. Kataria, that means the, the supply chain network has a big challenge. So, that that paper produced somewhere for Mr. Kataria has to go directly to Mr. Kataria and not to someone else. And uh, that means I cannot s just have a, a, a stack of papers and distribute like this. It should be like, okay, this is for him, so he should go to that place itself. So, that supply chain network challenges are important in this case. Okay. So, I think I'm just before time, <laughs> uh, there are few examples, uh, but these are like not complete smart factor examples, these are more connectivity examples, uh, just to show like uh, how connectivity is happening uh, around. So, it's a Google Glass, I think you have heard of Google Glass. So, I think you can wear a glass and then. The open control technology from Beckoff enables the realization of innovative concepts for operation and monitoring. Here we are demonstrating the control of conventional PAR64 spotlights, DMX lamps and moving lights by means of our I.O. system, the PLC and visualization. Beckoff presents the connection of data glasses to a PLC light controller as a technology study. Here we are demonstrating a pair of Google Glasses, which are connected to our controller via VLAN. We can exchange data with the glasses by ADS. We have programmed an app into the glasses, with which we can not only display the data or send data to our controller, but even scan QR codes, enabling the operator to have the desired information that he needs from the suitable object displayed very, very simply on the glasses, so that he can control the object. An app programmed by Beckhoff enables the operation of the application using data glasses. Two scenarios can be envisaged as applications. One is the case of maintenance, where a maintenance employee uses the glasses to work hands-free on lamps or objects in the theatre. 
Data points are displayed to him at the same time, and he can interact with the controller. Another application is conceivable, even to the extent that visitors to a theatre or theme park could wear the data glasses in order to obtain added value information, or even possibilities to control the entire attraction, thus creating added value for the user. A lot of you are using this GPS system. So Google Glass is the next generation from, uh, like a, a device developed by Google, which you can wear and you can like your glasses. You can have that on your on your eyes, and uh, you have actually one small display. Uh, we had a, a, a seminar where we showed this also in, in Delhi, where we bought one of these glasses, and we have, we can play around and then control some PLC parameters. So it will not be like if it goes through this technology. I think. You will see like in the industry, there will be a lot of maintenance guys going around with Google Glass and maybe a machine is down, so he immediately gets a pop-up on the Google Glass. Oh, there is something wrong on that machine, please rush. Uh, so this connectivity, uh, this is again a connectivity challenge. That means uh, you are driving a car and you automatically you get a pop-up like you have a message or you have a call coming in. So you can just touch the glass and then take up the call. and. So that is the reason where, where they made this or on the fly, when you are driving and you want to take a picture, as so you can say, glass, take a picture. So it takes a picture immediately. So it's not like you have, you're telling the phone that now I open the app and then open something. So uh, Google Glass was developed for that, but uh, we saw how this can be used for the industrial environment. And uh, this was a showcase where we showed like this is also important for industrial world, where we can actually see that the maintenance guys are wearing this and moving through the shop floor and they're getting these pop-ups all the time, like what is technology or not? Whether you go towards that or Google? See, when the mobile came, I think there were also a lot of uh, like people are saying it, uh, it's RF yeah, 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 yeah. but now it is, it is becoming a popular. So they will find ways that, okay, like how this Google Glass is going to move. Because definitely this is a, a technology which is developed. It's the first, uh, I think, a device which we see. I don't know how uh, it will look after five, ten years. Maybe it will come like a one, uh, what you can say, sticker which is coming on your glass maybe, I don't know. So which is already having a display being built. Uh, so uh, it's like you imagine and you have to build the thing. So uh, already it's working. So I don't know whether it uh, uh, has, how, how to wear it on spectacles, it's a challenge. Maybe they have some you know, attachment. Uh, but what what is important here is like how things are moving and we have to adapt to that. So definitely, uh, they will, uh, Google is a big company, they will find things like how this can be made more. And there will be more people coming up with their own glasses. So, uh, because once somebody does something, so others will follow. So that's how things are. And uh, I think this is a good demo where, okay, we showed like how this can be used for machine control. So how that technology advances, because we are not Google Glass manufacturers. So we say like, you have a mobile, I can control my home from mobile. So uh, we have developed an app where we can uh, have a, uh, like I can control my home lights and all from just turning on your mobile. So before going home, I can actually switch on the AC or something. This is also available. With, at least in my home, I've done that. So being a, a automation savvy, <laughs> I've done that. Uh, but this is like the the future. So just uh, to show like how we are adapting. So definitely we have to see that when this thing comes up, we are ready with our tools. So we are developing a tool for communication in that case. We have a time, we can take some questions. I just want to uh, correlate some of the things what he has just mentioned in this time. <coughs> now you see, he just given an insight into the future. So till then, as I mentioned in some of you, someone of you have asked the technology, I said we were just discussing 80s. 80s, then 2000, now beyond that. So the coming lectures are beyond that. <laughs> And as you have mentioned uh, rightly, and we all teachers, we should prohibit Google Glass in the exam. They will just cancel the paper and start writing because they are getting answers now. <laughs> so, so, so definitely the positive and negative aspects. Jhasa, uh, UP is much ahead of Germany. Uh -huh. Why do you need to go through the process of exams to get a certificate? <laughs> <laughs> they predict their certificate, they have a 
low cost contracting <laughs> agency and you get it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I studied in Germany, uh, just to uh, uh, share some experience. There they have open booking rooms. Because when you have a working industry, you never expect that an uh, engineer has no Google or nothing. So, important is he solves the problem. So, I mean, you can ask my students, uh, last seven years we are conducting exam on automation the way you are thinking. <laughs> I also feel that uh, engineers should be provided the enough resources. Sure. The idea is basically to solve the problem after you have everything available with you. Yeah. There is the real challenge. So it's not uh, just memorizing some formula that will come to help. And uh, the next day you have different formulas. Correct. <laughs> 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 So it's a, it's a wonderful talk, I should appreciate and, and slowly now we keep on moving on future. He just started the talk today. Uh, slowly we'll just get a few more technologies and the good part, tomorrow we'll be having... Symptoms. Yeah. Just darshan, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so I will just uh, request Devaji uh, to just give him a Thank <laughs> you.